So, Choi uh, Jae Hoon? Yes. Here. What does Kim think? I can say uh, spend more money by government, more government in the way to spend. Spend the more money? Or, yes. And because uh, if the spend more money by government, so because it's vacation in place and, and it linked uh, link with People's demands also increase and it makes the some cycle. Yes. Okay, so that's called a virtuous cycle. What's the opposite of a virtuous cycle? Virtuous cycle. People, government spends money. Okay? Government spends money. So what happens next? People get Money. People have more money. Have more money. <coughs> what happens next? They buy products. The man goes up, right? They buy products. So they buy more products. That's demand. What happens next? Company gains profit. Company. Yeah. Demand goes up, supply also goes up, right? Demand goes up. Buy more products. Company produce more. More goods and services are produced. So what is higher? GDP is higher. Increase. Okay. More GDP is just goods and services. People are buying more, so more goods and services. If the GDP increases and people are buying more, what happens to the government money? Does the government have more money or less money? Then the government can spend more money. Again, and the cycle can go around. Okay? So the key thing is here, people's expectations. Are they going to? The government is spending money to manage the people's expectations to make them buy more products, spend more money. Is that going to work if the government spends a lot of money but people people don't spend any money? Is that plan going to work? The government gives the money to the people but they don't spend it? They don't buy products? Is that plan going to work or not going to work? No, not going to work, right? That's part of the plan. To increase the GDP, we need to buy products and services. Okay? So, that's the idea of Keynes and the monetary theories. Okay, what about <coughs> uh, the supply side theories? So, the question that the supply side theories ask is, can we get the suppliers to supply more? Right? They think the problem is, the supply is not enough. Okay? So, why are the producers unwilling to supply more goods at the current price? So currently we have the price and producers are not supplying. They're not producing. They think it's too low. They prefer to sit at home and read the newspaper. Okay? So we are asking ourselves the question, why are they sitting at home and reading the newspaper? Why the price is too cheap. They're not making enough profit. Okay? So is it because they're greedy? They're lazy and greedy? No. They just prefer, they don't want to work? No. Just, I'll just sit at home all day? Right? Is it because of rising costs? Is it because the oil price is too high, so the, it's not profitable, the salaries are too high? Is it because there's not enough resources, like oil or electricity or water price is too high? Is it because they have too high taxes and too much regulation? Okay, there was a book written in Italy by a guy who was running a pizzeria. And he wrote a book about why he closed down his pizza shop. And his main reason was all the regulations by the government. So he had very bad luck. But he had to pay a lot of money for the fire, fire safety. He had to pay a lot of money for the food safety. 
he had to take a lot of training courses for the fire safety, right? Then he, ha he had a very small pizzeria, so he just had one worker, and his worker got pregnant, and he had to pay her salary. Okay, and then he had other regulations, so he was just complaining about all of the regulations and taxes that he had to do. So in the end, he just shut down his pizzeria and went home. Okay. So that's an, I an idea, a simple idea. He wrote a book about that, right? Maybe he made more money, he made a lot of money from selling his book. Instead of running the pizza restaurant, right? So that's a simple business that he said there was too much regulation. Do you understand regulation? You have to do this, and you have to do that, and you have to do this, okay? And you have to pay money for this, and you have to pay money for that, okay? So, if there's too much taxes or too much regulation, people might not want to run the business. So, supply-side economists believe that the problem is we have a lot too much tax. Government is spending too much money, okay? So, supply-side economists think we don't need to hire that many people. So if you look at Greece, as part of the deal with the IMF, they said, Greece, you're spending too much money. Okay, you're hiring all these people. You have too many government employees, and they're not productive enough. So you have to fire 20,000, 30,000 government employees, because it's too much of a burden on business and the companies. Okay, can you understand that idea? So Greece went and, and fired 20,000 people, 30,000 people. But then they made a new government. The new government was not supply-side theory, they were demand-side theory. So the new government said, let's hire them all back again. <laughs> you can get your job back with the government. Okay? So IMF was fighting with Greece and other European countries. One, that was one of the main reasons. Okay? So the, the point of the supply-side economists is that there is a lot of government jobs which are not producing things and not useful. Okay? Or people are just sitting in their office all day, just playing solitaire. Do you know solitaire? Right? Letting all the paper build up. Because they have, uh, in countries like Greece and Spain and Portugal, they have a lifetime contract. They can't be fired. Right? They couldn't be fired. So the, go the government, went, only way they could be fired was the country was bankrupt and the IMF came. Right? Then the IMF can make the rules, then they can be fired. But before that, they couldn't be fired. So people was working very slowly, maybe, not very well. Okay, this is the point of the supply-side economists. Government is spending too much money, and to pay all those government workers, they have to get all the tax from the businesses. So if the tax is too high for the business, business is just going to close down. Okay? and we'll have nobody working. We'll have no money to pay the government employees. Okay? There was another famous example of this in the US. There, in the US, the government, the federal government pays for defense, for welfare, okay? that kind of thing. But the local government pays the salary of the police, the teachers, the firefighters, okay? the local government. So there was one city in the US, and it was quite a small city. And it went bankrupt. It was paying a very high salary to the teachers and the policemen and the firemen. Okay? So it was bankrupt. And it asked the teachers and the firemen and the policemen to lower their salaries. But they didn't agree to lower their salary. So what could they do? They put up the property tax to 20, 25%. Okay? They put up the tax on the business very high, okay? 40 to 50%. What do you think happened? Did people want to live in the city? In the US they can easily move to another city. So everybody moved out of the city. Business moved out of the city. The people moved out of the city. And still the firefighter and the police workers and the teachers still want a very high salary. But they said, look, there's nobody left living here. Right? It's a, say, a city of 50,000 or 60,000 people. Okay? There's nobody left living here to pay that. So the supply side economist would say, the, the tax was too high in this city. Okay? You need to lower the tax, maybe let go of some of the policemen or the firefighters. We have less people, so we don't need all the policemen and firefighters, right? There were some famous fights in the US with, between the teacher union and the state. Okay? They might say that we have to break the teacher's union. 
okay, and reduce the salary for the teachers or reduce the condition for the teacher, and then make life. What's the whole point of this? Is it because we're bad people and we want to pay teachers less? No, what's their idea? The idea is we have to give the business a chance. Okay? If we don't give the business a chance, we're going to stifle the business with taxes and eventually it's not good for the teachers in the long run, like in the city, in the US. Okay? They, don't, they don't get... Uh, so this is a different idea, right? We have the demand side economists, they're going to increase the salary of the teachers, increase the salary, take on debt, right? We'll pay back the debt sometime in the future, 20 or 30 years later. Supply car economists don't like to take on a lot of debt, they want to uh, make things easier for business. So if we make things easier for business, what's this virtuous circle? Somebody asked me about this in the last class. So we reduce tax. So we reduce the government spending, it's the opposite, okay? We reduce tax, so what happens? What's the positive thing from doing this? Reducing spending and reducing tax. What's positive? Supply. How does the supply increase? Why? Right? Cost is cheaper, reduce tax. Cost cheaper for business, okay? You don't have to pay as much tax, so now you might start a business. Okay, people run more businesses or hire more people. Okay. <clears throat> they hire more people. So we can create more jobs. Okay? Do you know small and medium enterprise? SME is the main employer in the economy. In most economies, about 90% of jobs are created by SMEs. Okay? People think it's the big companies like Samsung or LG who's creating all the jobs in the country. Of course, a lot of these jobs are based on, like restaurants, are based on the other jobs, right? But most jobs are created by small and medium enterprise. Okay? So we want to help especially the small and medium enterprise here to hire more people. So then we have more supply of goods. Okay? They can supply at a lower price. So GDP goes up, okay? Then we can come back here, we can reduce the tax more maybe, help the businesses more, okay? Can you understand this thinking? If GDP goes up, so government reduces tax, okay? Yes, that, if they have more GDP, we are getting more tax income. So if we keep the salaries the same for the government workers, then we can afford to reduce the tax again for the business. Uh, again, and we can keep going like in that kind of way. So the GDP is crossed off and the tax is the maybe zero? <laughs> no, you have, you're going to have to have some tax. Yeah, but you can reduce the tax gradually, but you're still going to have to collect some tax to pay the minimum, right? Pay whatever you need to pay. So we can see this is the big debate. Increase, they have reduced spending, we get more GDP. The other side, increased spending, we get more GDP. So that's the debate between the two sides. <coughs> so here's the idea on the graph. Okay, here is supply, here is demand. So the supply uh, gets cheaper. So we are now supplying, here we were supplying at this price. Okay, but well now we're supplying more at the uh, lower price. So the supply cur curve shifts and our output also shifts. So this is the pro uh, problem that we have these two different ideas. Usually this is more, we say, the right side of political party ideal. Okay? Do you understand the right side in politics? And then the other side is more the left side. So in the US, we have the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. How do you say in Korean, Democratic and Republican Party? Which is which? Which is which? Democratic Party. What's Barack Obama? Is Barack Obama Democratic or Republican? Democratic. Somebody say Republican? 
Democrat Republican. Right? Bush was a Republican. So, it's also important to understand about American politics for this reason, right? Because uh, we saw that the US economy is very important to the world. So what's happening in the US economy is also important. So these days we have Obama. Obama appointed Janet Yellen. Janet Yellen is the next most important person for the US economy after Obama. Okay, maybe she's more important than Obama. But he appoints her. She is the chairperson of the Fed. Makes the monetary policy. So the Fed decides about QE and the interest rate. Okay? Obama decides about the fiscal policy. So Obama is deciding about fiscal policy. Okay? Do you understand fiscal policy? Yes. Spending and taxes. Janet Yellen is deciding about interest rates and QE, money supply. Okay? So he can increase the money supply by spending more money. She can increase the money supply by doing QE and reducing the interest rate. So is Obama going to appoint somebody who is on the right side or the left side to be head of the central bank? Is Obama going to appoint demand side or supply side person for head of the central bank? Is Janet Yellen demand side thinker or supply side thinker? Supply side. Democratic Party is left side. Republican Party is right side. Okay. Which, which side is more demand side, left, left or right? Side, left side and more demand side. Right one is more supply side. So in the last election the Republicans were arguing we have to cut government spending. American debt is too high. We need to cut the spending. We need to reduce the taxes for businesses. Okay. The other side, the Democratic Party was arguing. We need to increase spending. Let's make a medical care for the US. They want to make medical care for everybody. They don't want to make medical care. Okay? So what about Janet Yellen? Who is Obama going to appoint? Supply side or demand side economist? Somebody who thinks like Keynes or somebody who doesn't think like Keynes? Like Keynes. So we can understand that. Okay? Now in the US they have somebody who thinks like Keynes. Is she going to be in a hurry to increase the interest rate? Is she just waiting to get into the office? I want to increase the interest rate. Decrease the money supply. No? What does she want to do? What does Keynes say is a good idea? Increase the supply or decrease the supply? Increase. increase. So is Janet Yellen going to de increase the interest rate? No. Oh, right. If we increase the interest rate, we reduce the money supply. Does everybody understand that? We studied about that in, in basic macroeconomics in the first week. Okay? If we increase the interest rate, money supply goes down. Reduce the interest rate, the money supply goes up. So most people expected that the US central bank would increase the interest rate this year or last year. But she keeps delaying. Okay? She keeps saying, I'll delay the interest rate, delay, delay, delay. Okay? Because she's a supply side or sorry, demand side economist. If the Republican Party were in power in the US, they are going to put in supply-side economists. Okay? The Republican Party will cut the government spending and they will uh, also not do as much QE or low interest rate. So these are our three options for the macro policy. So we want to change the demand curve, use policy tools that affect spending, get people to spend more money, shift the supply curve, do something to bring down the cost of production or otherwise affect output. Finally, laissez-faire, don't interfere with the market, let market self-adjust. Okay? So, so if we look at the history, there are not that many cases of this one working well. There are more cases of this one working well. Okay? So there are, I would say there are more economists who, who agree with Keynes on this side. Okay? Examples of this one working well is like the Great Depression. Okay? Uh, ben Bernanke, the previous chairperson of the Federal Reserve. He was a professor who studied about the Great Depression. 
That's why he got the job. Okay. So uh, they spent a lot of money. So in this case, we have uh, Germany or Sweden. Uh, Germany. Uh, for the last 10 years, Germany's salaries have been stable. Okay? Germany is, has a high level of inequality because Germany made some bad situation for workers about temporary contracts and permanent contracts. Okay? It made it easier for companies to hire young people just on temporary contracts. So that brings down the cost for the company. Okay? Uh, Germany made it, uh, divided the unions. They used to have a union in one company, all the workers were together in the union. But in Germany nowadays, just the top engineers have their own union. Say in the BMW, the top engineers have one union. Do you understand union? Yes. How do you say union in Korean? Nodong Johap, right? Just the top engineers have their own union. Then the entry level staff don't have any union. Okay? And the middle staff. Okay, they're the kind of changes Germany made to the law to make life easier for companies. So the people's salary is not increasing. Okay? But Germany thinks that that was successful because uh, Germany's economy is doing better than some other European economies. So they think that, that was a long-term decision by Germany. They understood they had the competition from other countries like China, India, low-cost competition. So they have to get more productive, right? So they did those kind of things. Sweden also did this kind of program when Sweden had a crisis on the supply side, and it worked well for Sweden. Okay? So we can see in Europe, because this was a good experience for Germany, they want to suggest this experience to the other countries. So they tell Greece, fire your government workers, uh, make it easier for companies to fire people, okay? Maybe. Don't make unions as strong. Uh, cut, the, cut the government spending. Make less regulations for business. And in this way, you can improve over the long term. Okay? So that is a kind of supply side uh, idea. So we can use the. Just la, do you understand laissez faire? Laissez faire? Laissez-faire means in, in French. Sometimes we use the French word because there's no exact word in English. When you're studying a new language, there may be some word in English that you can't translate to your language, right? Is there any word in English you can't translate to your language? Maybe. But in, in English we use some French words because the French word is not really completely translatable to English but it has a meaning. So laissez-faire means basically let do, let do. <coughs> laissez means let and fair means do. So this just means don't do anything. Just let people do whatever they want. It's hard to explain in English. Okay? So we say laissez-faire, it's short. So fiscal policy, Obama is the fiscal policy of the government. Monetary policy, the central bank. Supply side policy, making the regulations Less trade policy. So let's look at the policy tools. So the laissez faire approach requires no tools. The economy just adjusts to full employment. Uh, recently, Belgium had a dispute. There's the French side of Belgium and the, the Netherlands side of Belgium. They had a big fight and they couldn't form a government for a year and a half. But Belgium was okay with no government for a year and a half. Okay? So that would be laissez-faire approach. Don't do anything. Okay. Next one, fiscal policy. Use of government taxes and spending to try and change people's expectations. <clears throat> Next one, monetary policy. <coughs> Using money, credit controls to influence the monetary, make it easier for people to get a loan, harder for people to get a loan. Okay. Make the interest rate higher or lower. Supply side policy, deregulation, uh, to increase the ability and willingness to produce goods and services. So just one point on this supply side policy. Uh, Timothy Geithner, he was the Minister of Finance in the US during the crisis. 
the financial crisis in the US. Do you know what Timothy Geithner blamed for the financial crisis in the US? So the Minister of Finance in the US in the crisis, what did he blame for the financial crisis? People think it's a subprime mortgage crisis, that kind of thing, right? He blamed deregulation. Deregulation of the financial industry. Okay? So it's like if you have deregulation in the PSA industry, maybe you don't check about the fire escape or you don't check about preparing the food safely. So what can happen? You can have a crisis, right? You could have a pizza restaurant which goes on fire. And then because there was no regulations, there was no fire escape. Everybody dies in the fire, right? It's a disaster. So Timothy Geithner blamed this for the financial crisis, right? He said deregulation of the financial industry it was like taking away the fire escapes and so on. Okay? So the question Timothy Geithner asked then is why? And who is to blame for the deregulation of the financial industry? Clearly, Timothy Geithner is Minister for Finance in the US. He thinks the US is not to blame for the fault. So he blamed the UK. <laughs> right? He said the UK started. They started it. They started deregulation in... in if you ask me, it's a little bit biased, right? The US was also doing deregulation. But basically, the US and the UK was having a competition. Okay, so he says, race to the bottom. Do you understand race to the bottom? So the UK made less regulation for banks. The US made less regulation for banks. Okay? The bank went to New York. Then the UK made less regulation. Oh, let's go back to the UK, right? Then the US, no, no, don't go, come back. We make less regulation. We want the jobs in New York. And then the bank says, no, no, England has given me a good deal, go to the UK, right? So then eventually, after two or three years, New York tax income is way down, right? We'd better make low regulation for the banks, come back to the US, right? The UK, no, no, don't go, come back. We'll make lower regulation. Do you, understand? Do you get the idea? So they made a very, a very low regulation for the banks, like competition. That's one problem in the world at the moment, about tax and regulation. Countries are competing with each other, so it's dangerous for... It's a good situation for companies, right? Companies like that, but not good for the people. You can have that kind of crisis situation. So, after the crisis, I also, I also agree that the UK started, and the UK is the worst culprit in deregulation, okay? London, in the UK, they don't manufacture many things anymore. Very dependent on the financial industry. So you can understand that. You can understand the people, right? They are getting a lot of income. The city of London is making a lot of money, major financial centre. They're worried about the business going to Singapore or Hong Kong or other or New York or Germany. So they want to make low regulation. So even after the crisis, the UK didn't improve their regulation much. Hardly at all. Okay? The US improved their regulation, Germany and France improved their regulation, but UK is still not improving much. So that is the danger of deregulation. But because of the deregulation, the banks were able to make a big profit, more and more profit. Okay? What kind of regulation do we have on banks? We say that you can't give a loan to the, to the person who has an unstable job. That's a regulation. Okay? But they took away that regulation. Then the banks can give a loan to anybody. Okay? So it's a risky situation. So <coughs> we have to be careful when we're doing deregulation. <coughs> it makes life easier for business, but we don't want to have to go too far in the race to the bottom. So trade policy can also be used to affect the international trade. And uh, we'll talk about it later when we read uh, the reading, more detail about the trade policy okay? and the global business cycle. So, then, uh, do you have any question about the demand side and the supply side economists and their reaction to the crisis? 
Yes? Supplies theories What opposite? Apply of the decision left side on he yeah. said the is the right side. Yeah, it's going to yes, so this is this graph is showing that that's the problem, right? Problem is we don't have enough supply. So we need to increase the supply. Okay. So you mean this one here? Yeah. So we don't have enough supply here. Okay, so we don't have enough output. So here we have more output. We increase the supply. So the arrow, yeah. maybe it's clear if the arrow was going this way, right? Yeah. So this is the problem. It went from here to here. Okay, that was the problem situation. Right? The problem was this is the normal one. But now they're not supplying. Okay. But it, you're right. It should there should be another line here with the arrow here and the line here to show. Yeah. Thanks for pointing it out. Okay. Any more questions? Okay. So discuss with your partner. You are the minister for finance in Greece. Greece has a crisis. Do you agree with Angela Merkel of Germany? German School of Economics, most German economists and Austrian economists are supply side economists. Or do you agree with the US economists who say that Greece needs more demand? Okay, so discuss with your partner. You're the Minister for Finance for Greece. What policy are you going to do to solve the crisis? Greece has a crisis, it has a recession. How are you going to solve the recession in Greece? Discuss with your partners. You have two suggestions. You have the German suggestion, supply side, right? You have the US suggestion, demand side. Which one are you going to listen to? Americans are telling you yeah. demand side, Germans are telling you supply side. Yeah. We, we choose supply side. Going with the Germans? Why? Yeah. Because I like German. <laughs> <laughs> I just kidding. And because Greece uh Greece demolition region is uh, very much repair. So, government needs cut spending and low level, low regulation and low tax. So you think the problem is that there is too much government spending? Yeah. yeah. Like, 
the problem in the US city, you think the businesses will just leave because the tax is too high and maybe regulation is too high, so yeah. business can leave Greece and go to another country. Yes. So you think you have to face up, you agree with the Germans, they need to face up to uh, their problem yes. and cut the jobs or cut the salaries for the government workers. Okay, does anybody disagree? Anybody think the Americans are correct? Greece spends more money, then uh, we can get more demand and increase production. Anybody want to go that way? Yes? I think no. Uh, I also agree with the German side. But the problem is that in Greece there is very there is crisis in business. Uh, because a lot of businesses went, back, went bankrupt mm -hmm. and now they need to stimulate the business. And I think that the best way to stimulate it is the uh, decrease the taxes and mm -hmm. the government spending. Okay, so everybody is, is, is agreeing with this guy. Hans Werner Sinn, Professor of Economics at the University of Munich, right? These are the kind of advisors they have in Germany. Does this guy look like he likes spending money or cutting money? What do you think? What does he look like? <laughs> he likes spending money or cutting money? Here he says, the limits of the German promised land. Don't lend to your Euro friends. Okay? He's not happy with Greece. He think the Greece, they were fighting with Greece. He's making fun of the finance minister in Greece. Right? Uh, so he, if you read this website, Project Syndicate, you can read about that kind of debate. Okay? Project Syndicate is free. It's better, more higher quality than The Economist or that kind of thing. Right, you have these kind of top economists from different countries. Right, he's he is an advisor on to the German uh, finance minister. Okay, so uh, this is kind of higher quality, but it's free. These people do that free, right? So you can read this information. It's a little bit difficult, but if you can read and understand this, it's worth spending your time because you learn not just the business English, but you also learn a good idea from some of the best minds in the world, right? These are the minds, at least, that are working as advisors to the governments. So even if you think they're not the best minds, you can understand what governments are going to do if you understand who their advisors are and what their advisors think. <coughs> Here's another guy, Joseph Stiglitz. He has a Nobel Prize University professor at Columbia University. He thinks the opposite. Here we can see Keynes and economists, he says in the first line. He uh, agrees with the Keynesian economists. Okay? So here he said, when the euro crisis began, Keynesian economists predicted that austerity, austerity means cutting spending, being imposed in Greece would fail. It would stifle growth and increase unemployment. So the, according to those guys, they thought, no, you, you guys are wrong. It's going to make the growth lower and increase the unemployment, right? Uh, others talked about the European Central Bank, some Germans want to do that. So he says it has failed, the austerity failed, okay, in Greece. And he, he is saying, what should we do now, okay? So he says, don't blame Greece, okay? So... Uh, he, he is going to suggest debt restructuring so they, get, they don't have to pay back their debt and then the government can spend more money. Okay? So that's a way the government can spend more money. So you guys don't agree with him and you do agree with him? Right? So you can decide. You can read the uh, articles and you decide what economist do you like. Then you can have your favorite economist. You can read their blog. You can get their poster, put their poster in your bedroom. <laughs> you can send some fan mail, send a letter and ask them to sign the poster. Probably they'll reply. <laughs> send the poster back. <laughs> you, you can get a t-shirt with their face on the front. <laughs> right? You can, have, you can have a favorite economist, like a favorite pop star. Why not? Why are you laughing? People do that for pop stars. 
Economists are doing some good work for society, right? So they can, can also have fans. Can wait for them at the airport with big signs. <laughs> Maybe they'll come to Korea to do some talk, right? And scream. Ah! Signs say, I love your hands, I love your hands. <laughs> no, you're not going to do that. No. No, not that, not go that far. I've seen that with the K-pop stars on the TV. Do you do that for the K-pop stars? Chinese students, did you come to Korea because of K-pop? <laughs> Just to go to the airport and see the scream at the K-pop stars? Who's your favorite K-pop star? Hmm? Who's your favorite K-pop star? Don't have? Hmm? Don't, don't like K-pop? Don't know K-pop? What about Russian students? Sometimes. <laughs> Who is your favorite K-pop star? Don't have? Prefer economists? Okay, that's good. <clears throat> so then, any more questions or comments about that? Okay, so then, <clears throat> let's uh, talk about the international business cycle. So we, we mentioned before that, or well, actually, let's take a break now. And, Talk <laughs> <laughs> Ich komme mit. Ich bin hier. 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 Ich b